we have here an Aleron HR407 4 transistor tape recorder in my ongoing series of various early 60s um, reel to reel tape recorders found this one on eBay for less than 20 bucks and uh, uh, so let's take a look at it and see what we have here I purchased it knowing that it was missing a battery cover and as part of this video I'm going to uh, demonstrate how I design and print covers for these kinds of things. I've done that on several occasions um, so we'll uh, save that to the end. What we're going to do here is get this thing running if we can. Uh, so it'll be a restoration um, video or a resurrection video as Shango 66 calls them. So anyway you can see here that the uh, uh, recorder was made in Japan. Someone, uh, there's another really great YouTuber out there, and I'll try to remember to put the text on the screen here, who has done a number of videos on these tape recorders, and he did a, a restoration recently on an Aleron, not this model. I haven't seen this model on YouTube anywhere, so in any case, he did a restoration on his, a two-part restoration, and uh, uh, but I'm going to get this thing running and we'll get it cleaned up. So let's just take a quick look at it first. Interestingly enough, it came with the uh, manual and uh, has a schematic diagram in the manual, and then it has the specifications, the uh, operating instructions, very nice, very nice little manual. So let's take a look inside. Interestingly enough, the, the uh, strap still has its plastic cover on it from the original purchase. Let's see how it looks underneath the plastic here. Oh wow, yeah, shiny. So that's nice. And there we go. All right, the cover does not seem to be removable, which is a little unusual. But there we have the three inch reels. It says not for camera use. Okay, well, we'll keep that in mind. A four transistor, volume control, the uh, controls for the uh, transport. Then it has a microphone, an earphone an amp bin and then a remote and I'm pretty sure the remote is the uh, turn on and off control and sure enough this has a switch on it the microphone has a switch for on and off interestingly enough oh wow it even comes with the earphone how do you like that so it's complete interesting that this cord this shiny plastic usually melts and I don't mean by heat, but by some kind of chemistry melting. It usually melts and sticks to itself real bad, and then it ruins whatever is it's touching. Oftentimes, it is some kind of an interaction with the foam, the styrofoam. And this, this rubberized plastic material interacts with the styrofoam, and it melts pretty badly and makes a mess, and the, and the cords are usually damaged and all of that. But this is in beautiful, beautiful condition. It's like brand new. So there's the mic and remote plug that we have right there that controls it. Then there's a little uh, earphone. And then you have an uh, auxiliary in. And we'll even play with that. We'll hook up a, a 2019 cell phone into the amplifier and let it play some modern music just for the kicks. Probably allows... Um, I would assume that it would allow you to record off of whatever you plug in here, but we'll see. I haven't even read the instructions yet, so we're discovering this together. Apparently, this is some kind of a rim drive recorder. 
because there is no capstan in the uh, underneath this cover that pulls the tape through. So we'll assume, and rightfully so, that the recorder is driven by um, a motor right in here in the middle. Um, and uh, uh, we'll just see if there what what kind of condition it is in inside what it's going to take to get it to run. I think the first thing that we need to do is to uh, see if we can get it to fire up. Um, I did notice right off the bat, if you'll notice here, the corrosion on the terminal right there. And clearly that's going to be a problem. Those terminals all look really good. And you will recognize this format. Um, got some batteries here. The uh, C batteries, two C batteries, and a 9 volt for the amplifier. Very common configuration. If you recall, we had the same for the Brownie that we uh, did a video on recently. And it's the same kind of battery configuration um, here. There you go. The only difference might be is that the batteries are wired in series rather than in parallel, which would mean that the motor on this tape deck runs on three volts rather than on one and a half volts. And let's take a look at the schematic. It seems to indicate that the two 1.5 volt batteries are wired in series, which would make it a three volt power supply, but uh, it really depends. This has multiple cells and it says 1.5, so it doesn't show two 1.5 cells wired in parallel. I suspect that it is wired electronically in parallel. So um, we'll be able to discover that just by taking a look at the circuitry in here. All right, so let's uh, let's do a little bit of cleanup here on the terminals, and then we'll pop the batteries in here and see if we can get anything to move around, uh, get the transport to move, or if we have any sound at all through the amplifier. All right, I changed camera angles just for interest's sake, and um, we'll move this stuff out of the way. It's a lot of different ways to clean these terminals, and the uh, uh, sometimes what I'll do is is just use a little bit of uh, this is actually brake cleaner. Does a tremendous job. Doesn't usually create a problem on plastic, so you, you don't have to be too careful. But with all of these plastic radios, there is a chance that you will. Um, melt the plastic with the spray so you have to be very careful the i use deoxid which is the high dollar stuff some of you are probably using to deoxidize uh connections and uh, you spray it in volume controls and those kinds of things to clear up and we're not getting anything off of this so what i'm going to do is just really scuff it up with a brush and in fact, I think what I'll do is get my Dremel. That'll really do a better job. Okay, I've got the Dremel here. Just do a little bit of a... Place the brush with a stone. So let's put a stone in here. And the uh, brush is just too gentle. Yeah, that's taking it off. Clean it up with the brush. After we get the main corrosion off. Okay. 
Yeah, it's looking a lot better. And thankfully, it's just that one terminal. All right, so then we'll use the, we'll use the brush just to uh, take any sharp edges off. contact the oxid <clears throat> and should be good for the other connections here they all look nice and clean so let's put the batteries in it and just see where we go See if we get any kind of action on the top side here. Okay. Make sure we're on screen. Okay. No motor. No motor. Do we have audio? I don't know what this is. Huh. Interesting. That just fell out of the, the machine. I have suspicion that that's a battery compartment. Uh, no, maybe not. It's going to say battery compartment holder. Seem to be making good connection there. Okay. We definitely have an amplifier sound. to be any <clears throat> attempt of the motors to run so let's pull it apart and see what we can find okay, let's see here let's start with the outside ones Extra short one. Get a feel for what we're doing here. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, I think we got the right screws. Didn't have to pull them all out. see the big drive wheel here this is a very similar control to one of the other um, Iowa maybe uh, tape recorders that I have a video have demonstrated the video so just take a kind of a look here 
One thing I've learned from Shango 66 is that it's great to video and document just a slow perusal of everything. And then you can go back and look at your video if you've misplaced a screw or something. Still not sure what this does. I still think that's probably a uh, some kind of retainer for the uh, battery compartment. But we'll find out in a minute. We'll just keep looking here. There's the amplifier board and there's some of those old Alina capacitors that we have replaced before. Got the old germanium transistors. The motor switches back and forth and touches the drive wheel on this cap, uh, this drive for rewind, and this rubber ring and rubber tire is the play uh, reel. So the motor moves back and forth depending on the controls here. So let's. Uh, we know that the volume control is scratchy, so we'll spray that. And we'll spray these control switches. We'll spray the record and playback switch. And then we'll see if we get any response from the batteries. We still have power here. And we can pull a meter out and all of that. But ordinarily what you're going to discover is a dirty switch. Which is very, very common. These little mechanical switches get corroded and dirty. And you can see it's got two sets of switches there for rewind and and play. So there are the contacts. You can see the contacts right there. So let's just spray those gently. And we'll work the switches. I suspect that the motor itself <clears throat> is just locked up. And that will be easy enough to free up. Okay, then we'll get the uh, volume control. Get rid of the scratchiness there. So let's push it on play. There. There. Nice and quiet now. No more scratchiness. Just a little more. Okay, there, there, scratchiness is gone there. Let's get the playback and record switch sprayed. You can hear a little bit of the scratchiness sound in the amplifier through this little tiny speaker. I don't see any date codes on here. I do see a 690, uh, 967. Some would say, well, that's uh, August of 1967. Possibly. Um, really hard to say. Okay, so the switches are... All right. So the next thing, let's just check and make sure we got power going to the motor. And like uh, a lot of YouTubers, we have a lot of really sophisticated test equipment. But we like to use this old stuff. This used to be a little pocket multimeter that had a little case that had a place to store the leads. And you just fold it up. And I used this a lot in the field years ago when I was a tech. What I've done is I've pulled this whole thing out and grinded it off. It looks pretty coarse. but And I've just turned it into a little desktop. Um, multimeter um, and it works quite well so let's uh, I'm gonna put this so we can see the numbers maybe and let's just see what kind of uh, I'll turn the motor on play and see if we have any power but we don't need 200 volts probably a volt and a half so let's see what we get here okay no power to the uh, to the motor. 
So that would indicate that either we don't have power on our batteries like we thought we did. So let's check, just check the terminals. Make sure that the bat, okay, that one, 1.6. And that one is not. Okay. No power at the motor. So let's just confirm that we have power at the batteries. We'll click on the terminals, not the battery themselves. We'll check the terminals. Okay, so clearly the terminals are not contacting the battery because there you've got 1.6 volts on the battery. Check this one. Yeah, see we're not making contact. So there's, well, we are making contact, but barely. So we may have some corrosion here, which we cleaned off, thought we cleaned off. And I want you to look right closely into here. This connection right here is not making, this spring connector is not making contact with the battery. So we need to adjust some things there. Let's do that. Let's bend it up a little more. Maybe that'll take some of the tension off of that. Let's see. Now let's check this terminal. Okay, that's more like it. So we got power there. We're still turned off. Okay. <clears throat> and let's uh, check to see if we have power here. only a little so if I wiggle that a little more but you can see it's it's less than 1.6 volts so rather than fiddle with that let's just uh, clean it up a little more with the brush It looks better, but looks can be deceiving, as they say. So, let's uh, try the battery. Yeah. We still... There's the battery, 1.6. So we're still not making contact here. Here's the battery. And there's the connection, such as it is. Yeah, still not making good connection between these two pieces here. One of the things we can do to check is to just check our resistance between this terminal and this terminal. See, we don't have any, we don't have any continuity. If you wiggle it around like that, we may get a little bit, but still nothing. So we still have a, a resistance, uh, a bad connection here on this terminal. So I want to pull the stone out. <clears throat> We're going to grind that with a stone. Got a sanding disc here that might work. Let's try that.
I'm definitely, <clears throat> definitely taking the metal off. You can definitely see 